Praise the Lord, friends. I'm so glad that you're connected with us today. We're talking about knowing God's will through hearing God's voice. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by God and he delights in his way. You know, I believe when your steps are ordered by God, you can delight in him. He delights in you. There is a mutual joy. Praise God. It's very beneficial to you. Praise God. You know, the Bible says we're not to be like a horse and a mule that need driven with a whip. Uh, but we need to walk in understanding. We can get understanding from God, from the Spirit of God. Now, we've talked about a couple of different ways that we can hear God's voice. We, we said, you know, one way that we can hear the voice of God through the Word. And we know, you know, the truth about creation, about salvation, about Christ, about God, about the Holy Spirit, about eternity, about sexuality, about right and wrong. We know that from the written Word of God because of what the Scripture says. All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable to us for doctrine, thank God, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Glory to God. Now, we also can know the, the, the voice of God through the spoken Word of God. Gee, you know, I, I've had numbers of times that, you know, I read the Bible. I read the Bible through every year. I read three to five chapters of the Bible, generally every day, six days a week, and sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. But, but praise God, we just keep feeding on the Word. You know, it's good for you if you feed on the Word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Job said, I've esteemed the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. You know, Solomon said, my son, attend to my words, give ear to my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, for they are life to those that find them there, health to all their flesh. So we have the written word, but we also have the rhema word, the spoken word. Now, Jesus said this in John 6, 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing, and the words that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. So this Bible is not a dead book. It's not just a history. The Bible has perfect history in it. But thank God it's not just a history book. It's life. Thank God. And if you'll allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten the Word, bring light to the Word, it'll cause the Word to come alive to you. Now, we begin to talk not only about that, but we begin to talk yesterday about being led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God or the children of God. The children of God are led by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says this, and we were in 1 Corinthians 2 for a little bit. He, he says, no man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man that is in him. We found that the spirit of God speaks through the spirit of man to, in a man that's born again, a, a woman, person that's born again. There's neither male nor female in the spirit. So he says, even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. He says this in 1 Corinthians 2, 12, now we have not received this, we have the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. So the spirit of God shows us the things of God, shows us what God has for us, also reveals the plan of God for us. You know, Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit in his ministry. In John chapter 16, in verse 7, he said, it's very necessary for you, he's talking to his disciples, that I go away because if I don't go away, then the Holy Spirit won't come. But when he's come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go unto my Father, and of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. But then, so he's talking primarily there about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the world. He convicts people of their sin, convicts people that Jesus is the way of righteousness, and convicts people that Satan's already been judged. So you don't have to be judged with him if you follow Jesus and be made righteous. Then Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 12, I have lots of things to tell you. How be it? You cannot understand them now because they had not yet been born again. However, when He, the Holy Spirit, comes, He's going to take the things that are mine and take the things that are Father's, and He's going to show them to you. 
and He will show you things to come. Thank God the Spirit of God will give us revelation and show us things to come. Now, Proverbs 19, verse 21, we, we begin to talk about being led by the Spirit of God. Here's another scripture that goes along with this. In Proverbs 19, verse 21, it says, There are many devices as a man's heart, but the, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Proverbs 20, verse 5 says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. You see, you've got the counsel of the Holy Spirit. You have the counsel of God on the inside of you. But if you'll learn to take time and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your human spirit as a born-again person, you can hear the voice of God. Now, there's different ways that we can develop our ability to hear the voice of God. And one way that we can develop our ability to hear the voice of God and hear the voice of the Spirit is by praying in tongues. You see, praying in tongues develops our ability to hear the voice of God. I'm going to go to an Old Testament prophecy of this in Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28 says this, Isaiah 28, uh, we'll just read it on a lot down there about verse 9, 10, 11 in there. We'll, we'll read about this. This is a prophecy of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom will he make to understand doctrine? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, as you mature, you can learn to hear the voice of God. He says in verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. So not only does God speak to us through the word, precept upon precept and line upon line, but he also speaks to us by the Spirit. With stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to his people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. One way you can get built up and encouraged in the faith is praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude says this in verse 20, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of God unto eternal life. And so he says, this is the rest wherewith he causes the weary to rest, and this is refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord to them was precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go. And, and so as you look at this, he says, go and, and, and fall backward and be broken and stare and take. He, he's saying, if you listen to the Holy Spirit and the word, you're going to go and you're going to prosper. But if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit and the word, you can have challenges. Okay, that's the sh short story. I'm going to leave it right there right now. But one way you can learn to hear the voice of God more clearly is praying in the Spirit. Now I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 Paul gives instructions about the gifts, the speaking gifts, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, so on and so forth in the church. But he's not only talking about the public gift of tongues and interpretation in the church prophecy, he's also talking about the personal gift of praying in tongues. So listen to what he says. It, we'll, we'll just begin in verse 1. He says, Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. So he's talking right now about the personal prayer language, because when you pray in tongues, you know nobody understands you. And that personal prayer language is saying you're speaking mysteries. But he that prophesies, talking about in the church, speaks to men edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now, I want to make a note here. A lot of people don't quite understand this. Everything that has any revelation that somebody's speaking, they think is prophecy. However, the Bible says he that prophesies speaks to men edification, exhortation, and comfort. So the simple gift of prophecy has no revelation in it. It's to encourage, to exhort, it's to edify, to build up, and to comfort. That's the simple gift of prophecy. When you get into gifts that speak and have revelation, then you're moving into the word of knowledge, which is a specific fact that's in existence in the present tense or in the past, or the word of wisdom, which is a specific word, not all wisdom, but a specific word of God's wisdom concerning the future. And so 
He says in the Spirit He speaks mysteries when you're praying in tongues, even though your mind is not edified, your spirit's edified. And, and He says this when, when a person prophesies in the church, they speak edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Well, here's one reason. I want to be built up. I want to be charged up. I want to be ready to go. I want to keep speaking in tongues. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So thank God we can be edified, we can be built up in our spirit. If we prophesy, right, we're edifying, building up the church. Now, as we go on through this, he says, I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesied, for he who is greater who prophesies than he who speak with tongues. It's my desire. He said, I wish you all spoke in tongues, but it'd be better if you prophesied. For he who prophesies greater he that speaks in tongues, unless he interprets that the church may receive the edifying. So he says, listen, if you come to church, all you do is speak in tongues. And nobody, nobody interprets that. See, tongues plus interpretation equals prophecy. Nobody's going to get edified from that. However, when you speak in tongues in a private setting, you are building up yourself. So one reason, you know, to, you know, praying in tongues helps us develop our ability to, to, uh, to hear the voice of God is we're building up ourself. Now, he, he says, he says, if you uh, speak in tongues and, and you haven't prophesied yet, he, he says, he that speaks in tongues except to interpret that the church may receive the edifying. He, he goes on and says, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Because when you, when you get the understanding from that, you get edifying. So, so I believe this is one thing that works. As you pray in tongues, I believe you're being built up in the Spirit. And there's times when I'll pray in tongues, and I'll just be praying in tongues, building up myself, edifying myself. And then all of a sudden, you know, revelation will start flowing. I'll start getting understanding. I'll start getting direction about certain things. I'll start getting a knowing on the inside. This is where to go. This is what to do. This is what not to do. So on and so forth as I pray in tongues. So thank God for this gift of praying in tongues. Now, as we go on down, he talks about, he says, let him who speaks in an unknown tongue. This is this verse I'm talking about right now in, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. Pray that he may interpret. He says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What then I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with my understanding. So once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, God doesn't have to baptize you in the Holy Spirit again for you to speak in tongues. It's just like, just like once you pray in English, you, God doesn't have to do some special work for you to pray in English. Listen to what he says here closely. He says in verse 15, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, I will pray with my spirit, I'll pray with my understanding. So once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can just will and speak in tongues. I can start speaking in tongues right now because I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I just will do it. Now what do you say, Pastor? I have no idea. Right? Because I'm praying in tongues. When I pray in tongues, my spirit is edified. I'm being charged up on the inside, but my understanding is unfruitful. However, when I, when I, when he says, when we pray in tongues, let's pray that we get the interpretation. But you don't have to have a special baptism in the Holy Spirit every time you pray in tongues. Once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, just like I will to pray in English, when I get up, when I, when I go sit down at a meal, you know, in, you know, when I'm driving, whatever, I can pray in tongues in the same way. He go, listen to what he goes on to say. He says, also, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So I can sing in tongues. I can just will to sing and worship God in tongues. It's a very glorious thing. But he says, I also can do that. I can sing in my understanding. I don't have to have any special anointing to sing Amazing Grace. I can just sing Amazing Grace. Why? Because, you know, I just sing it. Glorify God. Hallelujah. So he says, else when you bless with the Spirit. So he's, what he's saying is when you're coming together in a group as a whole, you know, now I'm not against it. When we're worshiping things, different people speaking in tongues quietly. But he goes on and says, you know, if two or three people give a tongue, nobody interprets it. You know, if there's a loud tongue that comes out for the whole congregation, nobody interprets that after two or three times. Just go on and quit doing that because it's not edifying anybody. And he says several times in here, seek to the edifying of the church. He says in verse 5, 
See that the church may receive the edifying. In verse 12, he says, do this that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Now, he's not saying not to speak in tongues because he says this in verse 18. He says, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. So Paul, you know, who, who's written nearly half of the New Testament, Paul says, I speak in tongues more than you all. Glory to God. Now, how can a man who didn't walk with Jesus in his earthly ministry, you know, write nearly half of the New Testament? Because he spent a lot of time praying in tongues in the Holy Spirit, brought revelation to the scriptures, the Old Testament that he had as he prayed in tongues. And so thank God for speaking in tongues. It'll help you get built up. Again, we quoted Jude 20 and verse 21. Build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, Romans 8, 26 says this. He says, we don't know how to pray like we should, but the Spirit helps us uh, because when we don't know how uh, to pray like we should, the Spirit prays through us the perfect will of God. I want to go over there and read that, actually. I, I'm actually quoting it in my understanding of it. But I want, to, I want to read the Scripture and make a few comments here in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And we'll also look in verse 27. He says, the Spirit Himself helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. When we don't know what to pray for as we should... That this is one, one advantage of praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, your understanding is unfruitful. It's like having a mind bypass, a hotline to heaven. You are, the Spirit of God is praying through your spirit straight into heaven. Praise God, a hotline to heaven. Praise God. And you're praying the perfect will of God. Now, he says this. He says in verse 26 of Romans 8, he says, We don't know how to pray like we should, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. One translation says, with groanings that cannot be uttered in an intelligent language. Now, he who searches the hearts, I believe that's Jesus. Jesus knows the mind of the Spirit because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, the Holy Spirit prays through us, and He begins to praise through us the, the, the mind of Christ and make intercession for the church uh, according to the will of God the Father. Amen? So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, where's Jesus today? He's seated on the right hand of God. He's, he's ever living to make intercession for those of us who come to God by Him. But when we pray in tongues, we're praying from our spirit to God, the perfect will of God. And I believe sometimes when you're praying in tongues, as you pray in tongues, you begin to get revelation of what you're praying. So one way that we can develop our ability to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is pray in tongues. I have a very close men, friend, you know, and I've helped over a hundred people start the ministries, you know, the legal work for missionaries, evangelists, pastors, traveling teachers. I've helped people all over different places do different, praise God. But, but I've got this friend and this friend has been so successful. More, he's, he's had more success than anyone I think I've ever known of in, in a short period of time. Now, one thing that he determined to do when he spent it, started his ministry, he gets up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and he prays in tongues for an hour a day. Well, praise God, if you want to get edified, if you want to get built up, if you want to get direction from God, pray in tongues. Now, the Word and the Holy Spirit work together to, to give us direction in our life. One thing I believe that we need to do is we need to learn to listen to the still small voice of God, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in us. I want to go to an example in the Old Testament of this in 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is in the, in the life of Elijah, the prophet Elijah. And uh, Elijah had, you know, called, said, told the prophet or told King Ahab, it's not going to rain except my boy. Boy, it didn't rain for three and a half years. And uh, then Elijah had, had said, you know, um, you know, and they were out hunting for Elijah, trying to kill him, different things. But, but Elijah was hiding out where God provided for him. But then he, he went and called a meeting of 450 prophets of Baal, and he killed them with the sword. <laughs> after this, after he killed these 400 prophets of Baal, Ahab's wife Jezebel said, I'm going to kill him. And so the, the you know, Queen <laughs> Jezebel, <laughs> she came after him. And, uh, you know, Elijah met an angel. The angel, you know, cooked a cake, and he, he ate of that cake for four, and ran in the strength of that cake for 40 days and 40 nights. First ever angel food cake, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, but he ran in the strength of that cake, and, and um, after he did that, he came and hid himself in a cave. 
And he, as he was hiding, the, the, the Spirit of God came to him. It says the word of the Lord came to him. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9, and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down your altars and killed your prophets, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. So he, he went and stood, and there was a great strong wind. And I, that even the wind was so strong it broke the rocks in pieces. After that, there was an earthquake, and God was not in the wind. And after there was this earthquake, and God was not in the earthquake, the earth was shaking. God was not in the earth. You know, some people are looking for a great wind to move in, or a great earthquake, or, you know, a great sign. And after there's a wind, and then, and then there was an earthquake, and then there was a great fire. Some people are just, you know, looking for the fire. Well, thank God when the fire falls. But you know what? Praise God. God's not, not always in outward signs. And after the earthquake, but the, the Lord was not in the wind, the earthquake, or the fire, it says in verse 12. And after the fire, there was a still, small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the airing of the cave. And there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very, you know, he hadn't learned very much through all this. I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel for forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I'm the only one left. And they seek to take my life and, and take it away. And the Lord said, go return to Damascus. And when you come, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And he said, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Moha, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Listen, Elijah, there's more than you still alive. There's more than you that are still serving me. And when it came to pass, he says, He that escapes the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and he that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. And yet, see, Elisha said, I'm the only one. He says, I have 7,000 in Israel. And there wasn't a big population like it is today. And all who, whose knees have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So, praise God. God came to him. There, there, there was a great wind. There was a great earthquake. There was a great fire. But after that, there was a still, small voice. Now, how can you develop your ear to hear, hear the still, small voice of the Spirit in you? My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, Jesus said. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Isaiah 30 says this, you'll hear the, a voice behind you. I think it's Isaiah 30 in verse 20, behind you saying, walk in the, the, walk in the way. Here's some quick, uh, simple ways you can hear the voice of God. One way you can hear the voice of God is learn how to quiet yourself. David talks about in Psalm 63, I meditate on you in the night watches. And on my bed, I think about you. You know, a lot of times God will speak to me in the night when I'm quiet, when I'm there by myself. My wife, Barbara, hears God's voice so clearly for years. She hears better than I do. I just have to be honest with you. Thank God. And she's a tremendous blessing. And um, I had my friend, good friend, Greg Fritz, been with me over 30 years. And, and we're friends. He's on the legal board of our ministry. But Greg told me years ago, does Barbara spend a lot of time alone? She does. And she'll spend time just listening. You know, she'll, she'll spend time listening to worship music, different things. And boy, God will speak and she'll hear his voice so clearly. You know, when she was just a little girl, God appeared to her. Jesus, her mother was having a, a, a nervous breakdown. And Barbara was out on the lawn, and Jesus came and appeared to her and spoke to her. She's got a unique relationship with God. She hears the voice of God. But as you quiet yourself, one thing Dr. Lester Sumrall did, he kept a notepad by his bed so when God would speak to him in the night, he would write down what he said. Many of my messages that I pr prepare, I prepare between 2 and 4 a.m. in the morning because it's quiet, and I can just get up, and God will start speaking to me, and I'll be in my bed, and I'll just get up and go and work and just listen to the voice of God and, and, and you know, just hear the Spirit of God speaking on, the, not an audible voice, but just the Spirit of God speaking to my spirit. Praise God. So quiet yourself before God and, and listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Another way that you can, you know, attract or detract the, the voice of the Spirit of God is the music you listen to. You know, Saul rebelled against God and was doing his own things instead of doing God's thing, and, and the Spirit of God left him, and, and an evil spirit came and troubled him. And so when that happened in 1 Samuel 20, 16 and verse 23, they called David. 
And David came and played a harp, and as David played a harp, the evil spirit left. Praise God, and peace came. Glory to God. Music you listen to can attract. See, I said Barbara a lot of times. She listened to praise and worship 10, 12, 14 hours a day, just listening to worship constantly. You know, all her waking hours, she will listen to worship. Praise God. Quiet yourself to God. Listen to good worship music that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Another thing can be the people you hang around. You know, after Samuel anointed uh, Saul with oil to be king over Israel in 1 Samuel 2, he said, you're going to meet a company of prophets. You go and be with them. And the Spirit of God's going to come on you, and you're going to be changed to another man. And, and Saul went, and things happened exactly like Samuel said. Glory to God. And you know what? You know what? Saul prophesied. And they said, is Saul among the prophets? And so glory to God, you can hear the voice of God. You can know God's will and hear God's voice. Praise God, I've been teaching on this. In fact, I've got a four CD series on knowing God's will through hearing God's voice. And I've got a lot more that, that I've shared in these recent broadcasts that are just available. We'd love to get this out to you if you'd give us a call. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you'd like to partner with us, if you need prayer, be sure and give us a call. And, and you know, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, just give us a call. Praise God. I've got people that would love to pray for you, minister to you. We have people all the time, you know, call in, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receive Jesus as their Savior, receive healing. Glory to God. So if you need prayer, you be sure and give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I want to say a great big thank you to all my partners for making this broadcast available. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Go to www.lawsonpadu.com or write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.